In this video, I'm going to show you what I think is one of the best pieces of animation I've ever seen, and I'm going to explain why. But firstly, what separates good animation from great animation? <sighs> All right, I'm gonna try and give you guys a quick update on where I am with my current animation. My main focus is on my uh, my thesis film, I guess you could call it. You probably saw the concepts that I put up on the channel. So basically that's like the initial concepts, like the concept art and the designs and everything. But where I am right now, with it, I'm still on the animatic. I think I've done seven iterations now of the animatic. Like I'm aware that this need for perfection is slowing me down to the point where I'm not going to be able to fully polish it if I continue to edit the animatic. So it's a bit of a problem for me that I keep on making changes, but I'm quite happy with it right now, but that seems to be in a state of flux, uh, you know, from day to day. Let's go on to the next section of the video. What separates good animation from great animation? There's a lot more that goes into great animation than what I'm going to talk about, but these are some things in particular which elevate a piece of animation to become something really special. And I'm talking just about pure animation, not about the wider craft of filmmaking. The first mention is timing and spacing. It's amazing how a few tweaks in the timing and spacing can transform a piece of animation into something extremely enjoyable to watch. It involves having an understanding of what the points of emphasis in an animation should be and capitalizing on those points of emphasis. It's about creating contrast in the speed, but also about linking those contrasting moments together in a way which works as a whole. The best way to learn timing and spacing is to make a lot of animations and to play about with the timing and to build up a lot of experience in this way. Using a program with an easy timeline interface will help as well. So it's good if you are able to drag around the frames and adjust the timing easily and be able to play that animation back very quickly. So I would recommend Flash or TV Paint for this. The next two factors are about breaking down the barrier between reality and fiction. It's about immersing the audience into a fictional world. Making the animation feel like a reality in three dimensions, I think is an important aspect of animation. There are a few different ways you can do this. You can do this with camera positioning. So you don't have everything from this flat side angle because that, that flattens everything out and it shows that what you're looking at is not real. As well as positioning your subject in a way that has perspective um, and diagonal lines and atmospheric depth, it's also important to be able to draw forms. This is where the lines you draw appear to wrap around the object. I find that Renaissance artists like Michelangelo are a great inspiration for this. They almost sculpt what they draw. Like with the timing and spacing, the way to draw with form is by putting in a lot of mileage and developing your confidence and understanding with the subject you're drawing. So it's not very easy to train and it's something that will eventually just get better over time. I also believe that making 2D frame by frame animation helps with this because you need to start seeing your subject in 3D space. If you're, say, drawing a rotating object, for example, you need to know what exists on the other side of the object. So you will be drawing the subject with that depth in mind. Instead of just, say, tracing an outline of what you can see, that's not drawing with that kind of three dimensional depth. Moving on, here's a big factor. Characters showing thoughts and feelings, giving the illusion that these characters really exist and are making decisions on their own accord, rather than the appearance of an animator pulling strings from behind the curtain. It can be very hard to pull off and it requires an advanced knowledge in so many different areas of filmmaking things that can help are things like uh, knowledge of the human condition, timing, attention to detail. When you're able to do this, the audience can lose themselves in your world and it will feel like 
your character really exists somewhere. So to get this kind of nuance, I would recommend that you study great actors' performances. Some actors that come to mind as being particularly brilliant are actors like Marlon Brando, Al Pacino, Robert De Niro, uh, Meryl Streep, Johnny Depp, Tom Hanks. These are all great actors who are great to study. See how a simple change in their eye movement can indicate the passing of a thought through their head. See how the nuances of their character can be shown in the way that they stand or the way they move their hands, the way they carry themselves. So in the initial animatic, uh, I have this scene which plays to a Jimi Hendrix song called Voodoo Child. You probably know it, it's a very famous song. I don't own the rights to that track, so I'm going to have to change the track in the end if I want to show it at film festivals and things like that. So I contacted Shainik, and Shainik is a long-time collaborator with me for my videos. He created the track for Wild Fur along with Still Parade. <laughs> He then went on to create an entirely custom soundtrack for Dance of the Yokai, which is soon to be released on the channel. And I asked him, help us to recreate a similar kind of track with a similar feel to Voodoo Child for this animation. He said yes and within about 48 hours he had created the backing track for it. Luckily for me, my dad is a professional guitarist. He's had a long career in uh, playing in bands and as a session player, so he's very technically able, much better the guitarist than me. So my dad is going to be doing the uh, the lead guitar and some of the rhythm guitar, and then I asked Shainik to create the beat with the, the drums and the bass. He very quickly picks up on what I am talking about and um, when I describe what I imagine the music to be, and then he goes and creates something which is even better than anything I could have imagined. I'm so lucky to be able to work with Shainik. He is currently looking for work, for freelance work um, in audio engineering. So that can be creating the beat completely from scratch, it can be mixing, it can be mastering a track that you've already got. Like he's such an expert in these things and he's so gifted. So uh, at the very least go and listen to his music because it's just really nice to listen to as well. The last one I'm going to talk about is Appeal. And this is a fairly intangible quality, so my description of appeal might not be very accurate or it might be a bit subjective to what I think appeal is. So my idea of appeal is it can be traced back to design fundamentals or animation fundamentals, but it's also it also goes beyond that. It's also just how appealing we find it as an audience. It's an aesthetic appeal, but also it's just the flair that the artist brings to the piece. It's a, let's say, an extra detail in the animation or the lack of detail, um, the simplification of something that the artist has chosen. And appeal makes the animation interesting and enjoyable. To me, it's one of the main things that separates good animation from great animation. So it's actually quite rare for me to be able to point out specific appeal in animation because a lot of the time what is appeal is is actually sort of the one of the animation fundamentals at play. So it can be quite difficult to separate them out. You could also see appeal as just being a unique or innovative way of bringing the fundamentals of animation together. It's the kind of scene where you just want to play it endlessly on loop. If you know animations that have that kind of quality where you just want to watch them over and over again, those animations probably have very strong appeal to them. I am now going to show you what I consider to be one of the best examples of appeal in animation and therefore one of the best pieces of animation I think I've ever seen. Are you ready? Are you sure? 
Okay. <laughs> Look at this guy. <laughs> Look at him go. I'll try and explain it, but I don't think I can. It's something intangible. I mean, just look at him. If that doesn't bring a smile to your face, I don't know what will. It's a combination of all of the different uh, principles of animation and something else on top of it something special look at how f how much fun he's having um, and you can see it in his face and you can really feel it and and just the way it's perfectly timed the way he uh, spins round and does that little shake while sort of looking over his shoulder at you like he's kind of dancing for you he's the the timing of that little spin around and it's perfectly timed so he lands back on his foot and it's just it's a little bit fast which makes it so funny and it's just so full of life and it's got this rhythm to it it's infectious you out of the screen and into your soul and it just makes you happy you could break it into oh well it's got good timing and spacing but you know he's got good drawing fundamentals yeah but a lot of people have good drawing fundamentals and they never make things that are this nice to watch so i don't think that the principles by themselves can explain this so yeah, James Baxter is like a legend in animation. He was the lead animator in Spirit and a bunch of other things. If you are interested in joining the Animator Guild community, we have a group Discord server where you can uh, share your work, you can see other people's work, um, make friends. <laughs> we currently are in the middle of our, doing our first animation challenge and this month that animation challenge is uh, the challenge to animate an explosion so if you want to join in there's still plenty of time left before the deadline for this it's a great way to build up your portfolio and to learn a lot while you do it and it might be selected to be featured on the channel as well uh, the link for that will be in the description if you get a lot out of these videos and you want to help the channel Patreon is where you pay an amount of your choosing every time a video goes up and it kind of it does it automatically whenever uh, a new Animator Guild video is released. You can completely set it to whatever amount you are comfortable with and in return you get access to a lot of extra Animator Guild things such as extra videos and source files. I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.